23rd of November 1899 at Belmont, South Africa, the New South Wales Lancers were the first Australian soldiers to fire their weapons in action. On the 1st of July 1945, Royal New South Wales Lancers at Balakpapan, the Indonesian Kalimantan, starts, staged the largest employment of tanks in combat ever made by the Australian Army. The regiment trained as light horse and cavalry after World War I. In 1936, the regiment became a mechanised machine gun regiment. In 1939, a second AIF was formed. Many in the regiment volunteered and formed the 2nd 2nd Machine Gun Battalion AIF, a unit that fought with distinction in North Africa and Tobruk. The regiment continued on and saw an influx of young men for periods of compulsory training. Equipped with Bren gun carriers in 1942, the regiment became a motor regiment. Later, in September, it was equipped with surplus Matilda tanks from the United Kingdom as the 1st Army Tank Battalion, Royal New South Wales Lancers. The Matilda had performed well in France in 1940 as well as in the early phases of the North African campaign in 1941. But by 1942 it had been replaced by larger, faster, well protected tanks with smaller, with larger main armament, like the Sherman produced by the United States. Despite being outdated, the Matilda tank later proved itself to be an excellent jungle fighter. They were vastly superior to light tanks that the Japanese could break into using hand tools. Veterans from the regiment loved them, although they were a handful to maintain. At the beginning of 1943, the regiment transferred to the AIF after the majority of members agreed to do so in order to be eligible for overseas service. In August, the now 1st Tank Battalion, AIF, deployed to Milne Bay in New Guinea in preparation to support operations by the 7th and 9th Australian Divisions in the recapture of Leh and the Huon Peninsula. Over the course of November 1943 to January 1944, both C and then A squadrons took part in operations supporting the 9th Division, with C Squadron taking part in the Battle of Saddleburg and A Squadron supporting the infantry advance to Wareo and Gasuka Fortification Point. Unfortunately, B Squadron remained in Milne Bay for the duration, much to their frustration. Here a bit of overall history comes to the fore. The Japanese were so frustrated at not being able to destroy our Matildas the Japanese soldiers would jump out of trees with a bag of kindling, then attempt to light the fire on the engine covers. The following tank with its 7.92mm Visa machine gun would quickly deal with the foolhardy assault. The majority of the regiment returned to Australia in May 1944 and were based at Southport on the Gold Coast in Queensland with the 4th Armoured Brigade. Its role was to train tank regiments in infantry support. No one knew whether the regiment would get another Guernsey, but in 1945 we were lucky to be given another opportunity to support Australian operations in Borneo as part of the final campaigns against Japan. The reasons for our selection are not known, but the regiment had to give up their M3 Grant tanks and swap them for Matildas. For six weeks the regiment worked night and day in two shifts to get all the vehicles ready. Sadly during this time two soldiers were killed during a firepower demonstration at Wasp Creek on the 14th of March 1945. Lance Corporal Ben Evans and Trooper Merrick McNamee. 
There was a final parade through Brisbane before departure. The regiment departed Brisbane in late May 1945 on three American Liberty ships bound for Moratai, one of the northernmost islands in Indonesia, which was being used as a major Allied staging base for future operations in Borneo. The trip was not without mishap. One Liberty ship caught fire in Moreton Bay and had to return to port. Another, the Milan Griffin, carrying the regiment on main body, was hit by a storm off the coast of northern New Guinea and early on the morning of the 2nd July 1945 ran aground at Bonga. It took a week to recover and get moving. The overall plan for Operation Oboe was relatively simple. Before the landing, Balak Papen was subjected to weeks of naval and air bombardment by Australian and US forces, said to be the biggest ever in the Southwest Pacific Theatre. You could read a newspaper at night from the glow of the naval bombardment. The 7th Division objective was to capture and hold Balak, the Balak Papan area to enable the establishment of air and naval facilities as well as conserved petroleum producing installations. A squadron was tasked to land on F Day and support 21 Brigade on the right flank to secure Green Beach and advance east along the Vasey Highway to capture Sepingang Airfield. B Squadron was tasked to also land on F Day and support the 18th Brigade to secure Red and Yellow Beaches and assault and capture Balak Papan itself. C Squadron was kept in reserve to land on F plus 13. F day was set for the 1st of July 1945. The landings at 0900 on the 1st of July were a complete success with 33 tanks and two tractors of the regiment landing without mishap. They were greeted by a scene of desolation. Opposition was minimal. During the first day one Troop A squadron supported the 2nd 24th Battalion clearing buildings near Pump Road and two Troop A squadrons supported the 2nd 16th Battalion in clearing Hobson's Road. Interestingly, the A squadron recce party, including Corporal Peter T, discovered several tun tunnel entrances. Peter found a number of trapdoors and encountered three Japanese running towards him with a samurai sword or katana. He killed all of them and took the katana as a trophy. It is now part of the New South Wales Lancers Memorial Museum collection. Sadly, we were advised of Peter Teague's passing only last year, 2016. B Squadron operations on F Day were similar. One Troop B Squadron supported the 2nd 12th in capturing Parramatta Ridge at Hill 87. Four Troop supported the 2nd 12th Battalion moving east along the Valley Road. They encountered numerous anti-tank ditches and obstacles. <coughs> Over the next 18 days, the regiment's tanks were provi provided constant and effective close support to the infantry. Sadly, it was not without incident or loss. On the 2nd of July, B Squadron Echelon was mortared and four soldiers killed. On the 3rd of July, B Squadron, supporting eight brig 18 Brigade's three-pronged attack on Balak Papen, with FHQ supporting 2nd 2nd Battalion, 2nd 10th Battalion, sorry, to clear the cracking plant, and one troop supporting 2nd 12th Battalion, to clear the industrial area of Pandasari. On the 5th of July, three Troop A Squadron landed via LCM on the northern bank of Manganar Basar. They were shelled by a 120mm Japanese naval gun. All three of the troops' Matildas were destroyed. An attached sapper, Titch Russell, 
was killed on his 21st birthday. By the 10th of July, operations had moved inland, and 2's Troop B Squadron, supporting the 2nd 31st Battalion in capturing Solo and Coke Features. Sadly, at the latter, the Japanese sprang a well-sighted ambush and destroyed an entire platoon of A Company. Major Reary, the regimental second in command, was killed directing tank fire support, and Trooper Hull of the intelligence section was awarded an MID for his actions in directing tank fire. Trooper Hull's son, Colonel Frank Hollis, later commanded the regiment. His grandson, Dominic, serves with the regiment today, in 2017. On the 19th of July, tank operations came to an end. The honour of being the last Australian crew in action during the war goes to 2 Troop B Squadron, uh, as operations by the 2nd 4th Armoured Regiment in Bougainville came to an end the day before. By the end of July, all operations had finished and the regiment was concentrated at Peterson Junction. This parade was held on the 24th of October. Three hours work was done each day on the tanks, followed by sport. Battlefield tours were conducted and a points-based demobilisation scheme introduced. To avoid boredom, Parts on maths, accounting, electrical, radio, carpentry and joinery were introduced. VJ Day was declared on the 15th of August 45. The older tanks were destroyed and the remaining ones locked in a guarded compound to prevent the Indonesians from getting at them to fight the Dutch. There was reason to be careful. Oral history says there were communists in the ranks of the regiment paying locals to write expletives about the Dutch on the refinery fuel tanks. The regiment's rear party remained in Ballackpappan until September 1946, when they returned to Brisbane. Lieutenant Doug Ferns was the last man discharged from the regiment on the 6th of November 1946. It was raised again in 1948. We remember those members of the regiment who lives their, lost their lives at Ballack Papen. Trooper Broom, B Squadron. Trooper Burton, B Squadron. Corporal Playford, B Squadron. Trooper Richardson, B Squadron. The Major Erie, Regiment of Sick 2IC, killed in action on the 10th of July 1945. And we pay tribute to those who returned and gave us the great legacy of a rejuvenated regimental association and museum. The regiment at the time thought all of its tanks were driven into the sea or disabled and left to rot in Ballackpappan. 